right, I want to welcome y'all to another episode of For the Culture, man. We calling this the East Side Stories, episode one. Hey, yo, what TV is that? HBO. HBO? What's up? Gangsta Lou in the house from Mob Style. All right, Gangsta Lou. Now we got a New York City legend in the building. We got a man who made his name in the streets, not on social media. You know, being from an era where you had to be outside and active to earn your rep. Now, without no further ado, we got the big homie Gangsta Lou in the building, man. Gangsta Lou, tell the people where you from, man. Yeah, this is Boogaloo, a.k.a. Gangsta Lou, the original Gangsta Lou, repping that Harlem thing, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, you know, repping that mob style thing, you feel me? Now, Lou, my first question for you is, man, how did that mob style group even come about? Well, if you want to know how mob style started, to be honest with you, mob style started after AZ got shot up. I went and visited him in the hospital, and he told me it was over, like... No more hustling, no more money, no more cars, no more bitches. I told him he was crazy, but yeah, it's obvious he had a plan. He had a good plan. We uh, went to the one of them appliance stores where they sell all of the stereo equipment and all that, and he went and got the speaker with the mic connected to it. We go up in the apartment, you know, fuck around, and you know, came up with the mob style thing. The rest was just basically history. For the people that don't know, how'd you get the name Gangsta Lou? When did they start calling you Gangsta Lou? Opposed to Boogaloo from Harlem. Back then, it was a little rough. It was a lot of money in the street, but the killers was in the street also, you know? Just like I stress all the time, it was definitely no telling, you know? It was nothing but real shit going on. Like, you know, you could do a lot of things and nobody would tell on you. Like, you know, if you ran in the building, old ladies would open their door and let you run and hide in their house and shit like that. I mean, the money was there, the cars was there, the jewelry was there, but you know what comes with it, man. You know, prison, death, a lot of shit, man, you know? Now, this to familiarize the people with the mob style now. Who were the members of mob style? How did you guys meet? And how did y'all form that group? I'm familiar with um, Pretty Tone, Whip Wop, yourself, AZ. Now, who was the pioneer of the whole shit? Well, I got to give that credit to AZ. I mean, the name he came up with, I would truly say. Um, the whole idea was basically his. I don't know how he met Tone Capone, but yeah, Tone Capone, Whip Wop. You know, Whip Wop was my little man, you know. I had put him up under my wing when he was a real little guy. I used to have him up in the fever with me. He was 13 years old. I used to have him in disco fever with me. And uh, even though he was 13, he had the mind of a 30-year-old man. So, yeah, um, that's how Whip Wop became with us. Yeah, the plan was AZ's plan from the start as far as the music. Like, I remember when he told Alpo and Rich one day, we were standing on the corner, that we was going to start doing albums and shit. And, uh... Our poor and rich, they was laughing so hard, they was holding their stomachs like they couldn't stop laughing. And me and A was looking at them like we was real upset because at that time, Mob Style was just really starting to pop. But, you know, we street niggas, you know, who would ever thought that we would be rapping and shit? So, yeah. The younger generation, you know, when they think of Harlem, they might think of the ASAP Mob, Dipset, BBO. Would you say that you was the first real gangster rap group coming out of Harlem? And do you feel that you guys get the recognition for being that, for paving the way for Harlem niggas as far as in the music industry? I could say from some, but not from most, though. You hear me? As far as the rappers that you name, these guys, man, you know, the, some of them is, you know, all right with me, and then there's some of them that ain't. But at the end of the day, you know, the niggas who made it, who really made it, like, you know, the locks and, you know, niggas like Biggie, and you know, certain niggas, you know, nah, certain niggas that really pay homage to mob style, you know, those are the ones that I could truly say I truly do respect and I truly do love. Cause at the end of the day, they know where it all started. They know their history. Like, you know, if you don't know where you're from, how you know where you're going? I say that to say that for me to just sit here and just say bad things about niggas that's trying to make it or niggas that don't pay homage, I'm not gonna do that. But at the end of the day, they know what it is. You know what I'm saying? What's understood don't need to be explained, my nigga. Like Harlem, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Long Island, Jersey. Everybody know, like Mob Style, we started this. Like, niggas didn't know nothing about no piping on no seats. Niggas didn't know nothing about BBSs and painting the rims. Niggas didn't know nothing. Niggas didn't know nothing about Louis Vuitton. Niggas didn't know nothing about Gucci. Niggas didn't know nothing about Chris Style. Niggas didn't know nothing about nothing. Like, we started everything. Like, I'm gonna get real cocky on your shit. Like, at the end of the day, we started all this shit, man. All this shit they talking, it's our lives, man. 
But for me to be mad and for me to feel like a nigga owe me a got, just as long as niggas respect me and respect my team, it's all good, my nigga. Real shit. That's a big fact. That's a big fact. Now, let me ask you a question, man. How you feel when you hear niggas like Styles P spitting a verse and mentioning Mob Style? Even the newer generation, niggas like Dave East paying homage to Mob Style, Whip Wop, da da da, on his shit. Now, how that make you feel just being one of the elder statesmen of Harlem and when you see a younger cat paying homage, how that make a nigga feel? I don't really think words could explain it, bruh. Like on some real shit, like. Shout out to Dave East and the Locks, you know, Styles P, you know, Puff, you know, Bad Boy. Yeah, man, that shit fucks me up, man. It really do, man. Like, yo, I don't know, man. You know, what else can I say, man? Like, you know, they know I love them, man. You know what I mean? I know them niggas love me back. You feel me? So at the end of the day, man, it's a good feel. It's a great feeling, man. You know, God is great, man. Real shit, man. Explain to the viewers your relationship with Rich Porter and explain to the people what Rich meant to Harlem. Rich was something else, man. He was a one of a kind, man. Well, how I met Rich was really through A. That's his brother-in-law. You know, they got the baby together, uh, you know, uh, Pat Porter. That's AZ's baby mother, which is Richard Porter's sister. Yeah, Rich was truly something else, man. Like, uh, he was special, man. You know, he liked to brag, but not brag to put you down. Brag to, like, uplift you and, you know, really let you know, like, if I did it, you could do it too, like, type of bragging. But... He was a special guy. Like, I remember I chilled with him on his birthday one time, and we was riding around in his convertible, and uh, he stopped, like, maybe like maybe a car behind another car at the red light. So I, I'm sitting in the passenger seat, but I'm not really acknowledging why, but when he pulled off, I, I asked him, I said, yo, Rich, like, you know, why you take up so much space? Like, why you ain't pull up some more? He said, yo, bro, when you driving in the streets, like, you always want to give yourself room just in case somebody run up on your car, you able to make moves. So that was one jewel he dropped on me on his birthday. But then the ultimate jewel he dropped on me that he showed me that blew my mind back then and it still blows my mind to the day. He showed me actually how to get all the way from 132nd all the way to 145th in St. Nick without a red light catching us. And I felt like, yo, for him to do that and know the streets really, the lights like that, like, you really got to be Harlem, you really got to be street. Like, a lot of these dudes say they street, but street ain't in them. So, yeah, he was real street, you did? Now, Lou, we know you came up around some legendary cats, man. Now, what was AZ like back then? Was he quiet and low-key the way they portrayed him in the movie? Or was that depiction a little bit off? Or from your perspective, what type of cat was AZ like coming up? AZ was always chubby, man, you know? I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like, when I do my movie, man, or, you know, man, listen, man, A was fly than everybody, man. He was fly because he didn't know he was fly. And I know that shit might sound crazy, but, you know, I I, I talk like that sometimes, but sometimes I, I know how to make sense out of shit that don't sound like it makes sense, too. Like, what I mean by being fly and not knowing he was fly was, if A went and bought a car, he got in the car, but people saw the car, but they looked past the car. They wanted to look at the person who was driving the car. And when they looked at it, it was a fat nigga with a gap in between his teeth, with his hair nappy, with rubber bands on his hand, hands ashy as a motherfucker, jeans looking raggedy, but he might have about 100,000 on him in the car. So, you know, I mean, A was fly than everybody, man. I mean, he was truly fly than everybody. And then when he got to know he was fly, that's when he lost it. Like, he truly lost it. Like, you know, I could tell you stories for days, man, but I call them like, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know? I would say A was the good, Rich was the bad, and Poe was the ugly. Yeah, man, you know, A, he shined even when he was dull, man. I could truly tell you that, man. He, he was always a diamond, man. Even when he didn't even want to be one, he was a diamond. That's what made him a diamond. And we know AZ is your homie, right? And Rich was your homie, and you was also cool with Poe. When shit went left after Rich got killed, and the streets started whispering that Alpo had something to do with it allegedly now. Being that you was cool with all parties involved, after Rich was killed, how did you take that and then how did you feel about the individual that they were saying that had something to do with it? Well, I still feel fucked up about it. 
the reason why I feel fucked up about it, you know, for real, for real, is because I'm the one who brought Poe around. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually the one who actually just like really just brought him in the circle. Like I said on the first DVD, like, how do you kill something that love you? He was with A first, because I brought him to A, you feel me? At the end of the day, like I told you, A just moved completely different. A's really never been like a street, like out there, like club or none of that type of dude. Whereas Rich wasn't really like that neither, but Rich, like, you know, he hang out. He, he be in the street more than A, you know what I mean? So, you know, I guess Post started gravitating, you know, closer to Rich. And, you know, Rich felt like, you know, that was A man. So, you know, Rich did what, you know, a real nigga would do he put him up under his wing and trusted him and you know this was the outcome of it the shit hurt me so much because you know i heard his interview on why he did what he did and my thing is this you know when a nigga's a boss and i'm gonna say it again man i want the world to hear this man when a nigga's a boss you me or no one can do anything to a boss for lying or for any other reason, my nigga. Not a boss, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Not something that you love, my nigga. You feel me? So, I mean, like, if that was the case, you know how many times A lied to me? But it is what it is, man. You know, like, you know, who am I to, like, sit here and speak on, you know, why this man did what he did? I don't really know, bro. But, you know, I could truly tell you it hurt me, man. Because like I told you, man, I was the one that brought him in. So, yeah, I lives with this shit every day, man. You know, maybe if I didn't, man, Rich would still be alive, man. You know, that's why my whole motivation is no motherfucking friends, man. You got to be family to fuck with me from now on, man. Like, yo, my nigga, like, this shit really hurt. Like, yo, I hate to even really talk about it, man. But I live with this shit, man. I brought the man in, man. And if he listening and when he hear this shit, man, he know everything I say is facts, man. I say it in his face, though. I brought him in, man. Now, Lou, now, from your point of view, man, how did Darnell's and Rich's murders impact Harlem, man? And what do you remember about that time, my nigga? Because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people say that when Rich got killed, they not only killed Rich, but they killed Harlem. True facts, bro. Like, yo... That night, man, that shit happened to Rich. I was just with him, man, five hours before he died, bro. So that's another vision that'll never leave me to the day I leave here, bro. You know, I remember what he had on, man, the Black Miramont. I don't remember what kind of boots he had on, but he had on the Black Miramont, and he had a smile on his face, and I was looking at him because I was tripping to myself, like, damn, man, for him, you know, just to have his little brother missing, you know, he's still trying to, like, you know, be normal and shit, but I knew he wasn't normal. And the minute he walked away, it was like he walked right into his death, man. So yeah. And as far as Darnell was concerned, like that shit definitely, that shit fucked everybody up. Anybody who's a parent, anybody who's a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, like, yeah, man, that shit was really a tragedy. Like, you know, like, man, I can't even really tell you, man, like, yo, my nigga, like, the shit is like, yo, Words, man, I don't really think words is for a lot of things, man. And, and, and that's just one of the issues that, I mean, uh, one of the subjects that I don't think really words could really, like, describe the feeling, like, you know. And, and as far as um, Rich being dead and did Harlem die when Rich died, man, like, Rich was the king. He was the king, my nigga. Truly, he was the fucking king, my nigga. It's still dark after his death, my nigga. It ain't been sunny since, my nigga. Like, the sun it rises, my nigga, but it's still dark, man. It's gonna always be dark, my nigga. That, I mean, him and his little brother, man, it's gonna be dark forever, bro. Like, shh. Now, as you know, my nigga, the world know that Alpo was home. You know, he did his time. He paid his debt to society or whatever you might say. People say the things that they say about Alpo and things of that nature, but... You also got to include, man, the dude was a dangerous cat. I mean, to keep it real with you, man, I don't expect niggas to do nothing to say nothing to that man. You understand what I'm saying? Because like you said, the man was dangerous. So at the end of the day, my nigga, I think he's dealing with it, you know, mentally himself. I don't really think nobody really could do nothing to him, you know? after what he's done. I think only he could do something to him. Like, I, I, 
I just like, you know, I believe in God, my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? There is a God, you feel me? And who am I to judge? Like, for me to just talk bad about the man and all that, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, man, if a nigga, you know, ain't going to do nothing, you know what I mean? Niggas ain't going to do nothing. Like, what the fuck do you expect? Like, you feel me? It is what it is, man, you know? I don't expect Harlem, you know, Harlem niggas to do nothing to that man, you feel me? I think he's dealing with a lot of shit himself, man. Like, he can't go certain places. A lot of people going to look at him as, as, as being bad, no matter how many people, you know, like him or rock with him. So this is shit that he got to live with, my nigga. Like, you know, he, he you know, I, I really truly believe, like, this man probably have nightmares about shit, my nigga. I don't really know. I haven't talked to him, you know, since that shit. You know what I'm saying? I haven't talked to him in a very, 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 very long time. So I don't really know. Like, you know what I'm saying? I heard what he said. I was, like I said, I was kind of upset about it because I don't feel like that's a valid reason. But, you know, I haven't talked to the man. So, you know, I can't really judge or really give too much, you know, you know what I feel niggas going to do or what niggas should do or what niggas ain't going to do. I don't expect niggas to do anything because niggas was scared of him before he went in and they're going to be scared of him now he home, you know, and that's just that, bro. I'm keeping it 2000 with you. Like, it is what it is, bro. And then you got some niggas that ain't scared of him. You know, you talking to one. So, yeah, it is what it is, bro. Now, bro, there's a picture on the internet, right? There's a picture of you, AZ, Black Just. It looked like it was in the winter or something like that. Can you take us to that night? And can you elaborate on your relationship with Just? And how did you feel when you heard that he, um, he was killed? Man, it was cold as a motherfucker that night, man. That's my picture, bro. Can't really say what was really going on that night, but we was out there in the cold, man, you know? and. You know, Alex wound up pulling up and he snapped the picture of me, whip wop him, uh, my nigga Barrell, I think that's Black Panther, and uh, my nigga Big Jeff. Shit, man, Jess was my man first. Like, I remember the first night I met Jess, man. I, I met Jess in the fever, man. He used to always be in the fever. I used to always be in the fever. And I used to always be watching him because he used to always have his jewelry and shit on and be fly. And his niggas used to always have their jewelry on and be fly. And I used to be a little fly, but I was always by myself. And uh, one thing led to another and we wound up kicking it or whatever, whatever. And, you know, I was under the assumption that me and my team was the richest, you know, the richest niggas. So I never knew that it was other niggas that was our age, that was young like us, that was rich too. So when I met him... And you know, they took me out to Queens and they showed me like they cars and showed me the money and shit that they was getting. I couldn't wait to get back to Harlem and tell A. Hey, so I remember Dalu, he was driving Prem 600, the SL. And uh, he came and snatched me up and had me out there for about a month and shit. And then brought me back to Harlem and pulled in front of the game room and A and Poland was out there. And when I jumped out the car, the nigga A looked at me and said, yo man, where the fuck you been, man? And I said, yo, I was in Queens with my queen. I said, yo, hey, I got to talk to you. He said, about what? I said, I got to talk to you. He pulled him to the side. I said, yo, hey, man, guess what? He said, what? I said, yo, man, I got some niggas that's rich just like us. So he flipped on me, man. What the fuck you talking about, man? You talk too much. I said, yo, hey, man. He said, nah, man, you don't even know these niggas. They could be feds. I said, yo, hey, these niggas is young like us, man. They official, man. We got a game out in they park, man, in Queens, man, tomorrow, man, in 40 Projects. That nigga A said, man, I'm not going to no Queens, man. You're going to get me killed. I said, hey, you good, man. I've been out there with these niggas, man. Come on, man. And we went out there, and we played them niggas basketball, and they, and they caught in 40 Projects, and we wound up leaving with 10,000. I pulled some sucker shit. We had little Mike Boogie from Rucker coming. They realized when they went to Rucker that Mike Boogie played for Rucker, so they came to my block looking for me. You know, they was mad, but they wasn't that mad, you know, and we laughed and joked about it. But yeah, man, those was my niggas. Like, you know, that's how it all started. So my nigga, I know that you and Just had a bond. How'd you feel when you heard about the circumstances that were surrounding his death, my nigga? Man, that shit hurt me so bad because for real, for real, I mean, like, I can't forget about the twins, Richard and Ron and their brother Wally. Like, I used to always stay in jail and, and, and be in trouble, man, and them niggas snatched me up, and they really, like, 
bought me out to Queens and like, you know, showed me shit and let me know that they live right down the block from Baisley Projects where it was Dalu and, you know, Preem and, you know, Baby Wise and, you know, and Joe and his brother Bimmy and all of them was from, you know. I mean, like, yo, bro, like, for real, my nigga, like, that shit hurt me just like it did if it was Richard Porter, man. Like, you know, he was one of us, man. He was part of my my circle, my nigga. Like, yeah, he was Queens, he was Baisley, but he was also Harlem, my nigga. He was 132, he was the location. Like, you know, that's why I said that shit, you know what I mean? And gangster shit, like, you want me to bring the rest of the crew, whip out Pope Black, Justin Rich, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, man, you know, I always kept Justin something, man. That was like my dude, like, yeah, man, I remember when he had the fucking Audi, like, that nigga there was something else, man. Yeah, man, Black Just, man, like, you know, rest in peace, man, for real, man, forever, man, my nigga, man, Black Just, man. My question to you is, what did you think of the Paid in Full movie, and how true of a depiction of Harlem was the movie, from your point of view? As far as what I think about Paid in Full, Paid in Full was a classic, it still is a classic, it will always be one. Yeah, man. God bless all the people in that joint that's not here. Um, as far as painting a picture for Harlem, it definitely did that. If it ain't do nothing, it did that. Um, as far as my movie and why I say certain things that I say out my mouth, yeah, I was a little, I ain't gonna say a little, I was a lot better with A, you know, for even letting the movie even take off in the beginning. For the simple fact, there's no way on earth that the movie could even or should have even been done without me, at least being mentioned. When in all reality, when you talk about people like Black Justin, and you talk about, you know, Queens, and you talk about certain people, these are the people that I bought around, you know what I mean? Like A, Rich, and Poda, and know these Queens dudes. I knew Baisley niggas, I knew 40 Projects niggas. So, yeah, like a lot of the shit that was told, a lot of shit that was done in the movie at the end of the day, like, yeah, man, like I definitely feel some type of way. But, you know, certain things about life, like certain things might start off bad in the beginning, but they wind up good at the end. You know, like, you know, they say like the best come to those who wait. So I guess I'm one of those like, you know, I've been like not waiting because people been trying to get me to do it for so long. But I've been like holding back because I know like if I do it, it ain't gonna never stop. Like if I did a series, I don't know how many like it would be like it, the shit probably would never stop like for real. The reason why, because I'm one of the last of the last, you know, Poe is just coming home, but you know, his stories has been told. His story is the same story as Payton Paul, but I'm quite sure he got a story behind the shit that he's been through and the shit that he's going through. But yeah, man, I got my own shit, my own platform, um, my own story, you know, the way I want to tell it. And you know, the difference between mines and Payton Paul, I start mines at nine years old. And, you know, I got with A at 15 years old, so, because I got shit that need to be said and a lot of shit need to be told that wasn't told and wasn't said and paid in full. And I think the world deserved to know, man, the truth, man, for real, man. Like, they've been cheated, man. Now, my nigga, me knowing that you from Harlem and all that, right? Did you ever get a chance to meet Carlton Hines? Did you ever see his crew moving around New York City and have any interactions? Carlton Hines, that was my dude, my nigga. Like real shit, like I knew him before he even started fucking around, like when he was in school and all that, like, his cousin Cuckoo, Larry Pfeiffer, you know what I mean? We come up in the game together, he used to come up there and get money and shit from his cousin and shit when he was going to school. And then the next thing I know, he had the, the Lexus land, the green joint, and yeah, he had the projects there. Yeah, I know niggas over there from his projects. That's my niggas over there on that side. Yeah, man, he was a good dude, man. God bless his soul, man. Word, man. Another good nigga, man. Another one of our black street heroes, you heard? Real shit. I wish he would've just stayed in school, man. Cause his, 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 his ball game was serious. I wish he just would've just stayed in school. We did an episode on the YTC on the InfoMinds platform. There was an episode that was done on the, on the um, YTC, which is Yellow Top Crew, for those that's not familiar with the YTC. And there was a crew from the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Now I understand that you had got, got into a situation with them cats and um, you was allegedly shot in the chest by a member and um, your crew supposedly went back and retaliated and things of that nature, allegedly. Back then shit seemed like it was super turned up, like the Wild Wild West in Harlem, man. 
Can you speak on that time and in, in, in those events? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got shot up real bad. And, um, yeah, you know, like, you know, speculation, like you said, like, I don't know nothing about none of that shit that they was talking about. But, you know, at the end of the day, that shit was a long time ago, you know, and, uh, you know, like, yeah, man, you know, at the end of the day, I, I know niggas respect the fact that, you know, even though, you feel me, a nigga just kept it G'd up from the feet up, like, you know what I mean? Never to put police in nothing, nigga, like, never to go to police and talk about nothing, nigga, like, yo, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, it was just some street shit. And, you know, I respect street shit. I respect the game. I respect the code. I live by the code. So, yeah, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, real shit. Street shit. Now, another question I have for you, my nigga, was... Now, they talk about the cat named Clarence Heatley and the Preacher Crew. I was from Queens. So, you know, I didn't, you know, I, was, I didn't feel their impact on the streets as much as a cat from Harlem would have. You understand what I'm saying? So... Would you say that they was as feared as people say they was, or? I ain't really know them dudes, man. I was, you know, little guy, man, a little skinny dude, man. But I've heard a lot of stories, man, you know? From what I've heard, yeah, they, they was terror out here, man. Like, really terror. Like, some of the shit they did back then, people were still scarred and scared about, man. So, yeah, Preacher, like, yeah, his team, yeah. Like, yeah, the blocks are still there. So you already know, man, like, you know, just like you could talk bad about a person, you know, you know, you got to talk good about them too because they still got people out here that love them, man. Everybody got somebody out here that love them, man, you know, no matter what they did or who they are, man. So, yeah, man, you know, I really didn't know those guys. I just heard all the stories, man. It was way before my time, man, but, yeah. Now, my nigga, they say Fritz was the richest man in Harlem. Now, did you ever get a chance to meet him or did you ever encounter him in your day-to-days? Yeah, I knew Fritz. Yeah, he was a good dude, man. Yeah, he had a whole lot of money. I just didn't know he had a whole lot of money when I knew him. I didn't know he had a whole lot of money until me and my team, you know, started was doing what we was doing. I've heard the story about how, you know, he, him and Rich met, you know. He uh, explained it to A one day and shit, you know. For certain people like Rich and, you know, people, you know, in Rich category, to uh, look up to that man and uh, pay homage to that man still to this day, I would truly say, yeah, if they say he was the richest, I guess he was the richest, I, you know, you know, shit. We wasn't the only rich niggas in Harlem, you know, it was a, quite a few niggas in Harlem that was rich, you know, we, you know, we just happened to do things that other niggas didn't do and start things that other niggas didn't start, but as far as the money, I can't, you know, yeah, I guess, you know, yeah, shout outs to Fritz, man, on 12th Street, man. Now, Lou, now me, growing up in Queens, I had some people that I used to go and see all the time on um, 110th and 7th Avenue. This is probably the mid-90s and all that. One of my first, you know, serious girlfriends and all that was from uptown. She happened to live on 7th Avenue on 110th Street. And she used to always tell me about these no-fear cats and a dude named Jim Ice. Can you tell us about who Jim Ice was and a little bit about the no-fear crew from 12th Street? Yeah, I know them, you know, that's the same crew, that's Fritz crew, you know what I mean? Yeah, Jim Ice, Auto, Hen Dog. yeah, like, you know, yeah, I know those guys, yeah, that's, you know, that's all the same crew, you feel me? Um, I used to gamble with them in a little gambling joint called Sal's back in the days, you feel me? So, yeah, they part of Harlem history, yeah, I'm familiar with them. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the, um, well, I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen the, the Funk Master Flex interview that he did with Kevin Childs. Kevin Childs is speaking on the issues that he had with AZ. What's your take on that situation, my nigga? Yeah, I saw the interview. Shit, man, after all the shit I've been through and all the shit I go through, like, you know, it's, you know, it's another, just another battle, man. You feel me? I just try to just stay out of it. But, I mean, I could speak on AZ's behalf, man. Like, you know, niggas say what they want to say, man. Call a nigga a snitch, a rat, this, that, and the third. But one thing I do know for a fact, the man ain't never worked for no government, bro. He never did none of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, like, you know, um, you see what Flex said. Flex, you know, you know, where's the paperwork? It was no paperwork. It was, I mean, you, you know, you, people say things, but they don't really have no real, 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 real evidence or truth on nothing that they're saying. And the reason why is because it was not true. This man never worked for no government. You feel what I'm saying? And I mean, 
AZ was real pissed off about it because at the end of the day, he know the truth, man. The truth of the matter is, man, you know, niggas choose to fuck with who they choose to fuck with, man. And when shit go bad, it go bad, but not everybody want to stand up and be a stand up nigga and just be like, yeah, man, you know what? I fucked around and just made a bad decision, man, you know? This call was my call, and it was a bad one. Not everybody's going to do that, man. So, yeah, man, at the end of the day, man, you know, one thing for sure, man, two things for certain, man. When my name come up, ain't there a nigga on earth or planet, man, can say that I told or that I would tell on any nigga about any situation. I don't give a fuck what it's about, bro. But, you know, I, I listened to his man talk. His man, you know, set the uh, definition, you know, of a snitch or whatever, whatever. Well, I could truly testify, and that's what AZ was, man, because, you know, he was never street. He never pretended and never wanted to be gangster. You know, if you even talk too much about killing or robbing or shooting or any of that shit, A got away from you, and you never was going to be back around him no more. And, you know, like, you know, he always was just AZ. He's never, you know, professed to be nothing other than AZ. And, I mean, you know, not to say that I, I glorify, you know, you know, what happened or whatever happened, but at the end of the day, you know, not everybody could take pressure, man, you know? Not everybody's gonna keep it real, my nigga, and I understand that shit, you know? I don't expect everybody to keep it real, but when it come down to me, I'm gonna be real, and I'm gonna die real, so, you know, that's, that's the only thing that really matters to me. I, I just stay in my lane, man, you know? Did you have any personal interactions with Big L? And also, did you have any interactions with um, with the late Huddy Six, man? Rest in peace, Huddy Six, man. Huddy Six was fly, man. Never seen this fitted straight. Man, like, you know, Huddy, he was the life of the party, man. And not only, you know, the fitted, that smile, man. He had a wonderful kind of smile, you know? And as far as Big L's, Big L had a hell of a smile, too. Big L's, you know, lyrically, you know, <laughs> my nigga, he was before his time. Like, he was he was just, you know, unbelievable, man, as far as lyrics, man. And, you know, yeah, shout out to, uh, you know, Hall 40 for Lennox, you know, Herb McGruff, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The whole team over there, you know what I mean? I fuck with all them niggas, but, yeah, rest in peace to Huddy Cone and um, my nigga Big L's, for real, man. We lost, yeah, more good street, you know, uh, uh, heroes, you heard? Why? Now, a lot of people want to know, did you know ASAP Ferg, Pops, D Ferg? Well, D Ferg was like a mentor to me, you know what I mean? Like, I would really consider him a big homie if he was here today, you feel me? Yeah, he was a big inspiration on Harlem. Like, yeah, that was another tragedy I could truly say, like, you know what I mean? Like, Ferg was a real nigga, like, uh, yeah, man, his death really hurt me too. I can't lie, man, because that was truly one of my mentors, you dig? Word, shout out to the great bird. I haven't gotten a chance to meet his son yet because like I said, I'm just really getting back. But hopefully uh, he'll hear this and see this and you know, holler at me on the gram or something or just pull up on me in the hood, man. I'm everywhere, you feel me? But yeah, his dad was a good dude, man. Real good dude, man. I could truly say that, man. One of Harlem's fighters. Now with you being one of the OGs from Harlem, that's really still active and still out here. Did you ever get a chance to meet Maine? Baby J and um and also um Pop Lottie, did you meet them guys and what type of dudes were they for people that that's that's not familiar with them? Yeah, well I knew Pop Lottie. I know his family, his moms and his uncles and shit. As a matter of fact, his uncle Mikey. That was like, you know what I mean, like one of my tightest homeboys, you feel me? Like I learned a lot from him. And uh yeah, shout out to the Browns and shit like that, like for real, man. Like, yeah, Lady Linda. And, uh, yeah, man, to the Browns, for real. And uh, Mama Emily, Miss Emily, yeah. I mean, as far as uh, Maine, yeah, that was like my little east side homie, little, you know, Lincoln Projects. That's my little brother, Jahan, like, you know what I mean, little running partners. I know his brother, uh, Stan, and shit like that. It's funny you mentioned Maine, because, you know, that night that that happened to him, we was just in the gambling spot the night before that. He wound up getting killed the next day, and uh, I think you had named Daddy to me, too. Shout out to Daddy, yeah, um, Lexington, you know what I mean, her 17th Lexington, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, um, yeah, man, those was all my boys, man, for real, man, God bless them all, man, for real, man, like, shh, the shit is crazy, man, so many niggas is gone, man, and so many niggas is in prison, man. It's just not enough real niggas out here in the streets right now, man, the shit is like, yo, this shit is like, shh, I can't even... 
This shit is funny, man. It's really funny, man. It's really funny, man. Like how you could just name these names, man, and damn near most of these guys you naming is either in prison or they dead, man. And these was all real dudes, man. These is niggas that really represented Harlem, man. For real, man. Well, big bro, the people want to know, did you know the lynch mob, Lou Sims, Fat Boy, and Ferris Phillips? And if you did know them, can you explain to the people your relationship with those guys? and the, the influence that those guys had in Harlem. Well, the dude, Leon, I know him. That was like Richard Porter's, like one of his little homies and shit, you feel me? And uh, the dude, Farris, that's my nigga from 16th Street. I know his brother, Jimmy, and uh, I knew another nigga named Country. Like, you know, you know, like, yeah, they had a, a big influence on Harlem. Like, you know, I mean, I'm quite sure a lot of young niggas learned from them for the mistakes that you know, the names that you're mentioning right now, you know what I mean, and did, you know, growing up, like, you know, a lot of those, those names that you're naming, they was real young guys when they left here, you feel me? And, uh, yeah, man, those was like real gangsters, like, I, I could truly say, like, real Harlem gangsters right there, true story. If I ain't mistaken, Farish should be on his way home, you know what I mean? For real, but straight up stand up niggas, man. No sit down niggas at all. Straight stand up niggas, I could truly say. Now, another question we had, big homie, was did you feel that Poe built his reputation more so in DC, or did he build his reputation in Harlem? And did you ever see Wayne Perry or any of those DC guys in Harlem at any points? Well, I would say he built his reputation here in Harlem first, you know what I mean? I don't think it was bigger in DC than it was here. And as far as Wayne Perry, no, I never got a chance to meet the great Wayne Perry, you know what I mean? Straight stand-up nigga. I remember um, one time when we was young, we jumped in about four or five of the machines and shit and uh, grabbed a whole bunch of money and shit and uh, jumped on the highway and followed Poe down to D.C. They had something like Summer Jam at their stadium and shit out there. When we got there, that was the first time I ever uh, looked at a nigga named Rayford. I have always heard a lot about him, but I had never seen him until we had got there. And for all the stories and all the money that I heard he had, you would have thought he was a giant, like some big, like, you know, at least, but he was so small and so, like, real soft-spoken type of dude. I ain't gonna lie, I remember what he had on that day. He had on, when, when we pulled up, he had on lime green, like lime green, uh, linen pants with some lime green linen gator sandals with a light lime green linen shirt. So I'm looking at this guy, I'm saying, damn, that lime green looking good the way he got it together. And he had the Louis Vuitton in his hand. He had about six bitches standing around him and shit. So, you know, I'm looking at this guy like, damn, this is this, is, this guy, he looked like a little boy, you feel me? come to find out he wasn't he was a boss one of the richest guys come out of dc i really wanted to know what he was driving being that he had on all that lime green next thing i know he pull around the corner with the lime green 600 sl convertible with the lime green bbs's on it fuck me up man i mean really fuck me up man i'm like you know i always knew good shit man but yeah he put that thing together for real so yeah man you know Shout out to Rafers, man, and you know, shout out to Wayne Perry, man. Shout out to DC, period, all my DC niggas, you know what I mean? My nigga Uncle Bill, my nigga S, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, a few of my DC niggas, my Georgia Ave niggas, my Florida Ave niggas, my nigga Tay Tay, you know what I mean? Yeah, a few of my DC niggas, yeah, man, yeah. First of all, I want to start off my next question by just saying rest in peace to Rich Porter, rest in peace to Donnell Porter, you know, all the parties that lost their lives, you know, playing in the streets. You know, we talk about all the shit that we talk about. It's not to glorify those type of activities or to glorify the street life. It's just to paint a picture of that lifestyle for y'all. And we're going to also give you the flip side of the coin, too, because my man did a lot of time in prison as well. What would be your message to some of the shorties that's running around right now, a younger version of yourself in? What would you tell them about fucking around in the streets and shit like that? coming from where you come from? Well, it would be really kind of hard for me to tell them what not to do, bro. I ain't even gonna lie, man. You know, 
I got five boys myself, man. You know, I got a 19-year-old, man, you feel me? And like, you know, I pray every day for all my boys, you dig what I'm saying? And I used to like be that father and I learned that being that father ain't always good. And what I mean by being that father is being like extra aggressive with them. And I learned that me being that way with them, it was just pushing them further away from me. So now I'm dad and I know how to just be dad. But when it come down to the little dudes on the street, they more or less fuck with me so much and I love these little niggas so much and they love me back and they show me that they love me back. I mean, like, you know, when I talk to them, they listen. I ain't even gonna lie to you, you know. Very, I, I can't say like, you know, I, when I talk to these little guys out here, like they give me back talk and none of that shit. I done got looks before and you know, I done ran into some that should have known better and it took little ones to say, yo, man, you know who that is? And, you know, I'm like, nah, you know, don't say nothing. Like, you know, you know, but at the end of the day, man, you know, like these little guys are something else, man. You know, they they, they just got to learn, man. I, I was once they age at one time and I understand what they going through, you know, like I know what it's like to eat mayonnaise sandwiches and syrup sandwiches and, you know, moms not being around and wanting clothes from AJ Lester's and you know, couldn't get it. My mom's trying to make me wear AJs that wasn't real. And, you know, I know what it's like, you know, to be in the supermarket packing bags. And, you know, I know what it's like out there shooting CeeLo in the cold with your mom's little money that she sent you to the store with. I mean, I know what all that shit is about. So, I mean, like, yeah, man, I, I just wish these little niggas luck, man. You know, and if they need me, they know I'm here for them. That's why I really never leave the hood, you know? Like, you can take me out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of me. So, yeah, man, to all the little niggas out there that know me, you know, if you ever see me, man, you, you feeling down, you feeling some type of way, you need somebody to talk to, you could pull up on the homie Gangsta Lou, and, you know, we could just vibe, bro. Like, let me know, you know, where your mind is at, like, what's going on, bro, like, you know, and maybe I can help you, you dig? And, you know, that's that's just basically what it is, man, like, real talk, bro. Now, we want to lighten this shit up, my nigga. We going to give you a chance to talk your Harlem shit, man. Now, my next question is, you Harlem niggas is really known for throwing parties and shit like that, right? That's one of the things that you guys is known for, getting fly by in the bar and shit like that. They say the best out, which was Dame Dash's crew, they say that them niggas got the title, man. What you got to say about that, my nigga? <laughs> I'ma do what you just did. I'ma laugh, bro. Niggas can have the title, bro. Like, I'ma tell you something, man. At the end of the day, Niggas know who the real Chicago Bulls is, like, they know who the real Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippins is, like, you know, let's talk about the rings, bro. If you want to talk about some titles, them things come and go. But them rings, they don't go nowhere, bro. You feel me? Let's talk about that. And another thing I wanted to speak on, for people that still have got love for Rich, that want to reach out and support, Something that got to do with his legacy. His daughter got a brand of clothes called Rich Strands. www.richstrandsshop.com. People could go there to support the legacy, man. And what you think about his daughter and what she got going on? Man, I think it's a beautiful thing, man. God is great, you know? Um, I haven't gotten a chance to meet her yet, man, you know? But I, I, I've been away, man, you feel me? And I'm just like really getting back. That ain't really no excuse, but it's the truth though. I mean, all his kids, his son too, man. You know, like, you know, God bless him, man. You feel me? And they know, man, if they need me, I'm here for them, man. You know, and uh, I wish them all the best, man, for real. And whatever I could do to help, man, if I can, I'm gonna do it, man. That's just facts, man. So yeah, man, shout out to them, man. Like, you know, the whole Richard Porter family, man, for real, man. The king, man, always will be one and only, man. The number one king. Now, Lou, I wanted to get your opinion on this, man. Now, you know, as of lately, you've seen Rallo be indicted by the feds. You see A.R. Ab go through the same situation. And most recently, we see um, Takashi 6 9 going through that whole situation, being indicted and things of that nature. Now, with you being the elder statesman, man, you know, you being, being an OG, been around quite some time, What's your take on these guys going on these platforms and incriminating themselves or people blaming these platforms for the questions that they ask in which 
puts these people in a position to where they incriminate themselves, allegedly. Can't forget about Bobby Schmurder, GS9, Brooklyn. You know what I mean? You know, like, they was really, like, one of the first ones, like, to really, you know, go through the bullshit, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, it's like, it's really fucked up, because I always thought it was a such thing as freedom of speech, but it's obvious it ain't. But just saying that to say that, I guess, you know, you know, even me, man, we all just got to be careful what we say out our mouth, you dig? And, um, you know, I wish the homies the best, you know what I mean? The Billies, you know what I mean? Real shit, like, I wish them all the best, you know? Mel Murder, you know what I mean? All the homies, you know what I mean? The Billies, yeah, I wish them all the best, you feel me? Hope everything work out for them. Yeah, I really don't really know the situation with the uh, Big Nine boy, you know what I mean? Because I really don't even know him, but, um... I hope everything work out for all of them, you feel me? I, I heard a lot of bad shit about the Bix now, boy, but, I, you know, speculation and shit like that, you know? The streets be talking, you know, I be listening. But, uh, you know, yeah, man, you know, I wish them all the best, man, for real, man. So, my nigga, like, I remember the old Harlem, you know what I'm saying? Pan Pan, M&Ms and shit like that. The first Jimbo was over there on um, 25th, like... Regentrification and took over Harlem, my nigga. Now, what you think? What you think of Harlem right now, and what's changed from when you were coming up to the Harlem of 2019, my nigga? The streets ain't changed, bro. It's the people that walk on them, my nigga. Ain't nothing wrong with these streets. The streets always stay the same, man. The sidewalks, the same bubblegum stains, the same spit spots. Graffiti, all that shit, man. It don't change. It's the people that walk on these sidewalks and in these streets, my nigga. You know? And, I mean, shit, man. It's like, huh. now this shit is like on life support, man. You, you see what, we, what type of president we got. You see what he's trying to do. Not what he's trying to do, what he's doing. It's just so much, like, you know, it's, it's just really chaos right now, my nigga. Like, I just went and did something with Book Bank a couple of weeks ago for the homeless and I've always looked out for the homeless and I've always respected them and I've always known about them but the shit that I've seen and the shit that I witnessed my nigga gave me a whole nother outlook just basically on life period my nigga like a lot of us just gotta wake up my nigga it just took me you know a long time to just realize there's more to life than just getting money and fucking around and bullshitting my nigga and um I mean, my nigga, some of us, it just take longer than others just to just wake up, my nigga. And I just happen to be one of the ones that just happen to be a late bloomer. I ain't even gonna front. But better late than never, you know? And, um, yeah, man, you know, it, it is what it is, man. Like, the streets is really fucked up right now, my nigga. They, they thought they was doing something when they took people like me off the streets. But the, the, the real fact of the matter is we was the ones that the young niggas listened to because I know when I was young, I listened to all the old niggas that was getting money because I wanted to be like them. But they also let a nigga know you had to stay in school, you had to get good grades, and, you know, you had to do right. So when they asked you to wash their car so they didn't get no ticket, you washed it, you got money. When they asked you to wash their car, you washed their car, they paid you, and you got money. But these was the heroes. These was the guys we looked up to. They didn't let older men talk to little girls that was from the block. They always let old men know, no, she's too young for you. You know, old ladies could not carry bags. They always grabbed the bags and helped them up the stairs. You don't see none of that no more. Like, this shit is just completely different, but it ain't the streets. It's just the people, bruh. Shit is really fucked up, my nigga. Ain't no money in the streets. There's nothing in the streets, man. You know, there's really nothing in the streets, man. People are just miserable, my nigga, for all kinds of reasons, my nigga. It's, this is the saddest I've ever seen. And I mean, I, I, I've been doing this for a long time, bro, and I've never seen it like this, my nigga. I never thought that it would or could even get like this. But yeah, man, you know, it is what it is, bro. You know, you just got to just put up with it. That's all I can say. Just stay strong, man, and just stay prayed the fuck up, man. That's all I can say, man. On that note. Yo, my nigga, we appreciate your time, man. Thanks for coming to For the Culture and tapping in with us, man. We definitely appreciate your time. But, though, let the people know where they can find you at, man. Let the people know about the Gangster Lou Chronicles. What's your direction that you're going with that channel? And just, just tell the people about what you got going on right now. 2019, man, the No Friends Movement, man. 
Um, yeah, I got the No Friends shit. No Friends shit is actually uh, music that I did that uh, God Bless the Dead Boogie Bonds, which is AZ little brother. He passed away not too long ago. Rest in peace, Boogie Bond. You know what I mean? And um, that was one of the reasons why I put the um, the No Friends uh, 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 project out. And then I got, the, you know, the um, Gangster Lou Chronicles, Volume 1, Volume 2. You know, I'm on YouTube. You know, I'm on the gram, Gangster Lou 145. You can holler at me at any time. Um, yeah, um, and then I got the Gangster Lou story from one gangster to another. The original Gangster Lou story, you feel me? Which is just a spinoff to pay them for. All you kids out there, all you young niggas out there that's listening and all you young young ladies out there, y'all just stay in school, man, for real, man, because, you know, that's the only way out, man. School, my niggas. I'm telling you facts, yo. Like, I did dumb shit. Like, I left school in 11th grade, and I went to Manhattan Tech, which was an all-boys school. Like, I mean, yeah, man, I made, like, probably one of the biggest mistakes of my life, man, just leaving school. So, yeah, man, that's, like, one of the real messages I want to just you know, give to the youth, and I want to give a little shout out to all my niggas that's locked up up north, all my niggas in Manhattan House, all my niggas that's on the island, you feel me, and I want to give a shout out to Book Bank, to my nigga Glenn Toby, yes, and to my nigga D'Anthony, you feel me, the Book Bank team, you dig, and uh, Mob Style, you know what I mean, you know, my No Friends family, 145 St. Nick, Harlem, Bronx, Brooklyn, you know what I mean? And, you know, all my real niggas and my homies, you know what I mean? The Billies and Shines, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, and I got to give a shout out to Infamous and Culture, you know what I'm saying? For giving me the opportunity to do what I do, you dig? And I want to give a shout out to myself, man. Gangsta Lou, the one and only gangsta, the original Gangsta Lou. And I'll let your boy, man, Gangsta Lou 145 on the gram. Yo, my nigga, I appreciate you so much, bro. Good looking, homie. Peace.